Hell yeah, I'm ready. Are you? Of course I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready too. <laughs> Let's, Let's go! go. Yo, that was so that much was fun, dude. Oh my god, bro. Bring it in. That was unbelievable. <laughs> but wait, wait, shouldn't there be a fourth? Ah! Yeah, there is. <laughs> Let's get it. Ah! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Call of Duty Vanguard Minnesota Rocker roster reveal. We are here with your 2022 roster, Attach, Major Maniac, Priesta, and Standy, along with Coach Saint, Coach Jake, and Brett Diamond. So thanks to everyone for joining us. We are doing a bit of a combo live stream today. Um, in the Zoom with the guys, we have some media. So we're going to start things off with media Q&A. Um, press her on the line. Just go ahead and put your name in the chat and I will call on you in the order I see that and you can ask your question. Um, when you get um, up to ask your question, please just make sure you let the person know who you want to answer. So if it's for Standy, just make sure he knows that. Um, once we get through the press questions, um, make sure they get their, answer, their questions answered. We'll go over to the chat and we'll be hand picking some great questions from the chat to get to the guys as well. So we'll have a live fan Q&A as part of this. Uh, to start things off, I'm going to turn it over to Brett Diamond, Chief Operating Officer, and we'll go from there. Go ahead, Brett. Thanks, Cassie, and, and thanks to all the media that have joined us and, and excited to have the fans that are that are watching the live stream. So um, definitely encourage the, the fans to drop questions in the chat, and, and we'll, uh, we'll get to those um, after we've chatted here with the media. Um, we're incredibly excited to, uh, to bring the core roster back um, for another year. You know, I, I think everybody involved in the organization, um, you know, love to watch the obviously the the success the team had um, in in Major Five, and then uh, you know making a strong run at Champs. And you know, I think if we all feel like if there was uh, one more one more uh, one more event on the schedule uh, in this past season, um, we would have loved to keep that magic going. But um, you know, really excited to to bring the group back. You know, just to cover a couple um, you know nuts and bolts um, for the media. Um, you know, the, the organization had, um, when, when each of the players signed their contracts last year, the organization had an, an option year um, for this coming season. So the organization extended the option for each of the players. But um, after the season, you know, the, the coaches and the players all sat down and, and talked. And, you know, there were conversations that, you know, the guys can certainly talk about um, in this um, in this Q&A. Um, but we were, we were thrilled when when each of the players um, expressed that they wanted to stick together, wanted to come back and, and continue to be a part of Minnesota Rocker. Um, for the non-endemic media that's here, it, it's relatively uncommon for a you know for an esports team or a Call of Duty team to stick together multiple years. So, again, we're thrilled to uh, to bring the guys back. Excited to see what the continuity and and um, and what these guys can uh, can build on going in going into 2022 and Vanguard. So um, I'll, uh, I'll park it there in terms of um, any opening remarks and uh, we'll, we'll take your questions. Thanks, Brett. Tanner, if you want to go ahead and unmute, you can go first. Yeah, uh, Brett, I actually had a question for you and you took the word right out of my mouth. I was going to ask you about continuity and how important that is in one, you know, building a brand, but also obviously the competitive side. What did that mean to you guys to be able to, to bring everybody back and have the same coaching staff and, and really build up what you built on you know, this year and hit, take it into 2022. Yeah. Thanks, Tanner. I'll, I'll speak more to it from the organizational and the brand standpoint, and then would love our, our coaches um, to talk about it um, from a competitive standpoint. Um, but, you know, for us as an organization, you know, definitely continuity is important um, to be able to, you know, for, for fans, particularly in Minnesota fans that are, that are new to call of duty, um, for them to, you know, to see the same guys coming back and to continue to build the brand around um, these players who obviously first and foremost, our objective is to win. Um, but we, you know, 
we love the vibes with this team. Um, you know, every one of these guys are the, the kind of players you want to have as a part of your organization and, and, and have to build around. And I think we saw that in the success that the team had late in the season um, in terms of peaking at the right time, getting better as the season wore on the, the epic comeback in major fives. You know, we talked a lot about it in, in, in the press conference after that event, but um, the, the perseverance and just the mindset that these, that these guys had to come back from something like that. Um, you know, those are the types of, of people that you want to have as a part of a team or part of an organization to build around, um, you know, and certainly from, you know, obviously our organization has traditional sports ties where, you know, continuity year after year at, at every level certainly has its positives um, when you feel like you've got the right, the right group together. And, you know, I can't say enough good things about, you know, about Brian and Jake, uh, you know, from a coaching perspective, you know, in my opinion, we have the best coaches in the call of duty league. And, you know, I think most people that follow this organization know that, you know, that Jake Trova has taken on a much broader role, um, as director of esports strategy and is functionally the, the GM across all of our competitive rosters in addition to the time that he spends with the Call of Duty team. Um, so we'd love our coaches to speak to uh, to that continuity question as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, it feels really good just to be able to go into another year of the same roster. It's pretty rare uh, for Call of Duty. As Brett said before, I mean, I've dealt with multiple rosters on multiple instances. I feel like there's a lot of roster changes that go on in COD and people are just trying to look for, you know, success immediately off the bat I think we had a really long grindy season and you know we persevered and we we went through a lot of ups and downs and just seeing um how these players are able to you know deal with the lows is uh all you can ask for as a coach I don't think everyone I don't think anyone really gets uh too hard on themselves when we're you know not doing the best and everyone has the correct mindset to be able to get over the humps without uh instantly going to make a change so it feels good to be with everyone again yeah <clears throat> Well, Brian said, I mean, huge props to, to our guys, but Brian in particular for like building a culture that exhibits growth and that, um, you know, we try to fix our problems from within. Obviously, there were a few roster changes throughout the course of the season, but most of our problems, we, we tried our best to fix internally. We think that, you know, when you can stick with a core group of guys long term, they're only going to become more comfortable with one another and that just breeds success long term. So that's really what we're looking for. Awesome. Uh, Charlie, if you want to go next. Uh, yeah. Hi guys. Um, my question's uh, really for the coaches again. Um, what do you think are one or two positives that you can take from the 2021 season uh, and moving into Vanguard? Uh, I mean, one of the positives is that we're one of the, one of the uh, three teams to win an event last year. Not too many teams can say that uh, with phase winning for us winning one and Toronto winning one. So uh, just showing that we have the capability to win an event and beating the number one, the number two, uh, the number two team twice and the number three team to do it, uh, show that we can take down the best teams in the game. Yeah, I guess my biggest takeaway is resilience, right? And I think we had probably the craziest comeback in Call of Duty history, maybe, maybe even esports. What these guys did was really special. And I think, you know, anytime we're down, it'll be in the back of their heads that we can always win this match, no matter how many points you're down or how many maps you're down in a series, it's never done. Thanks, Jake. Zarin, if you want to unmute and go ahead. Yeah, uh, this one's for attach and it's kind of a two-parter. Um, so you're entering your ninth or 10th year now. Um, how do you feel kind of on a personal level where your game is at? And secondly, um, what's going to be the difference maker for your team as a whole in order to take that next step and consistently stay at the top? And when you say that ninth, 10th, it's, it's, kind of, it's, it's been a while, but uh, honestly, I feel like I'm getting to the best part of my career towards the end because the way Call of Duty is now, it's taken a lot more serious. You're getting it down to a science. You're putting a lot more work in where back in the day, traditional Call of Duty, you show up to events, you'd play, you'd practice, of course, but it wasn't anything as close to as serious as it is now. And I've been taking it more serious the past couple of years and I found success. And then um, to have a team like this is just great. And uh, what was the second question, actually? Um, I just want to know, like, what's going to be the difference maker for the team as a whole this year in order to, in order to take the next step and stay at the top level consistently? Uh, I think for our team is just to make sure we're always have, focusing on the fundamentals, especially in the respawn game modes. Because if we can just have a consistent respawn throughout the year, we can definitely win multiple events because our S&D is always going to be great. But um, 
hopefully we can have a couple more eyes brought in and the team can keep working hard. And uh, we'll just try and get to the point to be at the championship caliber and stay there throughout the whole season rather than getting there late and only having like two events to do that at. Thanks, Dylan. Uh, Pierre, Thank if you, you want to go ahead and unmute. Hey guys, um, question for Eli actually. Um, how have you noticed your career and kind of like the spotlight getting bigger on you since joining the team from the beginning to now? What has life kind of been like for you? Um, seeing like the whole transition from like originally getting like picked up and not really being like per se like known or like people not really knowing how like how I'm going to be as a player to seeing it now is just like it's kind of life changing in a way, but also I feel like it motivates me and pushes me to like only want to become a better player and uh, win more with this team and like be a better player and teammate for this roster. And I mean, uh, it's just, it's a great feeling to be honest. It just pushes me and makes me happy. And uh, I mean, I'm proud to be here. So. And are those cat ears or dog ears? <laughs> I can't tell. Cat ears. Nice. Right on. Shout out version one. <laughs> Thanks, Eli. Um, Brett Blakemore, you can unmute and ask your question. Hey, guys. Uh, this is for the whole team. Um, I asked uh, Preston and Eli both on the podcast, if you take the team and go back to a past title, what do you think you'd be best at? And they both said World War II. And I don't know, you know, from stuff that I've read, the new game is kind of a World War II, Modern Warfare mix. I don't know if we haven't played it, obviously. Um, from what you've seen, how do you feel about uh, what it compares to and how it uh, bodes for your team? I mean, I have played it, and it does feel like a, a, a cross between uh, Modern Warfare from the other year and <laughs> World War II a couple years back in terms of how the, how the game plays and feels. So it's a, it's a good blend. I think the team will, you know, play really well in this engine. Anyone want to take it on the team? Mike? Yeah, I mean, I'll talk about it a little bit. Honestly, I, I forgot my answer to that question. Um, but, yeah, World War II, I think, fits our team. I think on this team, honestly, we can go into any game and probably be a pretty good team for it. Um, but, like, fundamentally, like, if we have a good spawn system, good maps and stuff, like, especially now that we have a lot of chemistry built up, I think World War II system, like, just fits this team a lot, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with Preston on that. It really just comes down to the fundamentals. Like, if we have a good spawn system, a good hard point system, I think if we figure that out and how we want to play our own game um, going into the year, like early, it's that's what's really most important. Because, like Dylan said earlier, search and destroy. I think we're going to be disgusting at no matter the title. So I think it just comes down to like the respawn game mode and then whatever that third mode is going to be for us. Uh, yeah. To bounce off Mike, I agree because uh, I think that uh, respawn is like. Starting in the beginning of the year, especially having our full team starting in the beginning of the year, instead of like last year, kind of having the roster that we want later in the season, having a full year at the beginning and just building upon of it, like for the next months and months, I feel like we're just only going to get more consistent and uh, have like get fundamentals down, understand the spawn system. And I feel like that's only going to make us like better as a team. So. Cool. Uh, Tio, if you want to go ahead and unmute. <clears throat> and ask your question. Yep. Um, congrats, everybody, on the uh, on staying together. Um, this question will be for Mike and Preston. Um, I feel like every roster announcement or rumored roster is getting compared to FaZe right now as kind of the top dogs, and that's kind of become the, uh, the bar everybody's uh, comparing themselves against. Um, as two players who played with that FaZe core just a year ago, um, or two years ago, how do you think this team can take down FaZe? Want to go first? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so obviously going into Vanguard, every organization, every team, every player is trying to have a roster that can compete with FaZe, right? Because if you can't compete with FaZe, then you scratch it. You got to do something else. Um, so for me personally, um, having a roster that – we have good habits. Um, we have a good system here, like you saw at the end of the, um, the Cold War season. So to go into a new game um, and build on top of that system with players that I'm completely comfortable with um, in and out of game and just to have like when you play with a certain player for a while, like a year, two years, like you, you develop certain tendencies, like you know how they're going to react on the map when something goes down. So and that's why phase is so good. Like they take advantage of like 
how each other's play styles are like look at a BZ and simp so when you have players like that that you just know certain things of how they're going to react to a situation without having to even really comment that's when you get really really good um so yeah like our like i said like our system if we build on top of that and learn the game fundamentally i know for sure we can compete for any championship um especially in a land environment i mean we've done it um you saw it at major five we had a decent run at champs uh, could have done better there but um the good habits in the system is there it's just all about developing and, and building on top of that now for me yeah no i, I think this team is really good um just co competing at the top level and just taking down phase or whoever's the best team next year and any year uh just because like now we have that built-up chemistry i know it took us a while to like um start really showing it towards the end of this year uh, but now we have that going into this next year, so we can really focus on our system because uh, I think the system of, like, respawns, like, just the way you like to play certain hills, certain rotations is such a big thing. Uh, so now that we have some chemistry, and, and especially, like, even inside and outside of game, like, we know, like, almost everything about each other. So, like, going into next year, like, we know exactly how each other like to play, how we think, uh, like, certain, like who's, who's better at what when it comes to, like, even comms or to certain, like, who calls setups or whatever. Uh, so I think that's huge, and I think we're going to be a uh, high contender for next year. Thanks, Preston. Uh, Joey, go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Hey, guys. Congratulations on the roster. Um, there have been some talks about uh, roles um, for the 2022 season. Um, I'm just wondering, do you guys foresee any role changes from the previous season, or you guys kind of wait <laughs> out to see how Vanguard plays? I think, uh, yeah. yeah. You, you want to go? Uh, yeah, I can start. Yeah, you got off. that. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, I don't think roles are going to be an issue for this team. Um, I mean, obviously, going into the year, I'm going to be main. Preston's probably going to be flex. Dylan and Eli are going to be subs. But with our roster, um, I mean, obviously, Eli will probably stick on a sub, hard sub. But with Preston and Dylan, those they are completely flexible. Um, players, which is, I think, the most important thing uh, in Call of Duty right now is to have that third player that can pull out a sub whenever it matters or pull on an AR, like, in for a hill or, you know, in a, in a round of SND, like, look at Cami, look at uh, MC, like, those kind of players. So you need to have a player that can flip a switch, and Dylan or Preston could do that. So just depending on how the meta plays out, I mean, if it's three subs, um, I think we'll be another disgusting uh, in that meta as well because all three of them can run a sub. So, yeah, I think it just all depends on how, like, the meta plays out. Most times, like, most of the time going into a new game, it'll be, like, a 2-2 split. But over time with, like, modes and maps, like, that'll develop into, like, uh, maybe a third sub here or, you know, just a 2-2. Uh, I think it brings up, like, more opportunity for strategy also, like, being able to pull out different weapons at certain times. I think it brings uh, more variables into your gameplay and, uh, like, strategically wise because... You can always throw a different look at another team, and especially if, like, hey, like, if you're not doing so good on this part of the map or this hard point, hey, maybe pull out a different weapon and see what you can do with it. And it, can, it just brings up more opportunities for uh, different success, and, uh, and I just think it's a, it's a great thing to have on a roster. So good players to have. Thanks, uh, Eli. Um, Jack, go ahead and unmute and ask your question, and Pierre, you can go next. Hey guys, congratulations on the on the roster. Um, you spoke a little bit about your respawns that need um and different types of of gameplay, like different game modes that will help you succeed. Um, but we don't quite know the third game mode yet, whether it's going to be control, catch the flag, domination, or even patrol, which has been trialed in the in the beta. Um, do you have a preference on which one you'd prefer? Um, I'd say for us, it's really hard to say until you play the game because each game plays different no matter what the mode is. Uh, I would say the community probably doesn't want domination. I feel like that one's always been uh, kind of a... Uh, they, don't, they don't really like it. It's kind of boring. Some people say CTF is kind of boring as well, but we'd be down to play a new game mode and have to learn it like Control. Uh, but if we can get CTF back, that'd be great as well. Yeah, I think for me, like... Uh, control is probably the most fun to play and to watch, in my opinion. CTF can be crazy sometimes, so that's up there, too. Uh, and I enjoy playing CTF, too, as a competitor, but I know it can be stale sometimes. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I'm down for something new if that comes up. But uh, for me, I'd probably say my favorite game mode, uh, third game mode, would probably be Control. 
I agree. I like control a lot, but I never really got to play CTF in a competitive standpoint, so that'd always be something to try out. Or even the patrol game mode. I read up a little bit on it. It's like a moving hard point, I believe, and like you kind of have to work together on the point. I don't know. I don't really know how that'd play out, but it, it seems really interesting. So. Yeah, you know, bring it, it back. It, it'll be interesting how to like see that how that game mode plays out. Um, for me, I think control is a, a good competitive game mode. Like you know, like Preston said, it's it's good to watch. It's it's fun to play. Um, as long as the offense and defense are balanced in Vanguard, um, I think that could be a third game mode. But CTF is also a game mode that I think would be a good third as well. So I guess I'll have to see how it plays out competitively with the new maps. Cheers, guys. Pierre, you want to go? Question for the coaches, and if Brett wants to chime in on this too. Um, you mentioned earlier it's rare to see a team um, stay together for, for more than a season or two. Is there a reason for that? And, you know, what do you – what really kind of led to in terms of this team – staying together for one more year and is it possible that they could stay together for longer um yeah uh it's rare for teams to stick together too long because everyone wants instant success and and gratisfaction if teams don't really win in like an event or two uh the players on the team start you know resenting each other and, and kind of like looking for the next best thing so uh that's kind of what stems a lot of the roster changes in call yeah. of duty i agree with brian Again, I think it goes back to culture. Um, it's being able to resolve interpersonal issues and, and team issues internally instead of immediately looking outward to solve them. Like That's something that our group of guys and Brian did a really good job of throughout the entire season was recognizing you know, what our skill ceiling could be and the best ways to unlock that instead of taking the opportunity to find a short-term solution that doesn't allow us to reach our peak. So... Um, and then to, to touch on your other question, I mean, look, we, these guys really enjoy playing with one another. Brian loves coaching with them. I love being able to work with everyone involved. So, you know, the sky's the limit for this group and we hope to, to keep bringing more championships to, to Minnesota. Yeah, you know, Pierre, I'll add from an organizational standpoint, you know, first and foremost, you know, the roster decisions are in the hands, you know, the coaches and obviously they talk with the players, um, you know, every, every step of the way when things are happening, um, from an organization standpoint, obviously it's great. It's great to have that continuity. As I mentioned earlier, when you're building a brand, you want the fans to be able to, you know, recognize the, you know, recognize the players, especially, you know, in a new market, like we are in Minnesota, you know, year after year, that's, that's super important. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the most important thing to this organization is to win. And, you know, the, we have the confidence that that this roster puts us in the best position to do that. Obviously, last year after the first the first season um, of CDL, you know, we we had a wholesale change in the roster because we didn't, you know, we we didn't have the group that we felt like could could take could take the organization where it needed to go and have the success that that we expect to have. Um, so we're you know again just you know, incredibly proud of the, of the progress this team made over the course of the season and, and excited for the, for the bright future that, that these guys have as they, as they continue uh, to play together. Okay. Brett Blakemore. Yeah. Uh, just another question for, uh, for Brett here. Um, if anyone else wants to chime in too, uh, I know you've been consistent on saying if, if players are going to represent Minnesota, that they should live in Minnesota. And that was kind of the expectation going forward. Is that, is that still the plan? Cause I know there's a lot of people that would love to see you guys around rocker HQ. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely the plan. You know, we had the, for the, um, the video we showed at the top, the guys were in Minnesota to film that, um, uh, Took them through, uh, took them on a little tour of the facility and and the apartments uh, here at the Viking Lakes campus. Um, you know, so we're uh, we're excited uh, to get the get the guys up here. Okay, Theo, this is a last call for media questions after Theo. All right, I was um, I was trying to figure out who to ask this to, and I think Dylan is probably the best bet. Um, you know, as somebody who's been kind of a highly touted SMG in the scene for a long time, you, you've got an interesting perspective there. And I'm wondering what you think uh, Standy's ceiling is after that impressive rookie season. Yeah, I think Eli 
I don't know. His ceiling, I don't think his ceiling has been reached. Uh, he was only on the team for, what, like four or five months, something like that. And that's his first time ever being a pro. So to see him come, come in and where he started to where he just got to the end of the season that quick and being able to just learn every single day, improve as a player, improve as a team player as well, uh, it just goes to show how smart he is and how if he wants to keep working hard and keep doing that, who knows how good he can be. Uh, when he gets to that, the peak of his career. But I think he still has a long ways to go because he's going to have a really long, successful career. But he has all the tools he needs to make it happen. All right. Some I appreciate gas. that. Yeah, Got good you. gas, but also w. keeping him a little humble. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, humble. Moment. Don't over-gas yeah. me. <laughs> Thanks. Cool. So we can go ahead and we'll go ahead and take some uh, some questions from the chat. First of all, lots of love for Standy. I think maybe it's the cat ears, new eyeglasses <laughs> combo there. So yep. I'll have to chat for that. Um, first question, Alexander Massaro. Uh, this is for the coaches. Do you have any concerns with this roster if the meta isn't two subs, two ARs? Um, no, I'd rather the sub, uh, rather, rather the uh, meta be three subs personally. I honestly hope the meta routinely changes throughout the year because I think we're going to be one of the few teams that could change along with it seamlessly i'm i'm like genuinely not concerned about meta with this roster love that um dk fan 51 question for management or the team what connections or community building can we expect for rocker and the state of minnesota great question yeah i I love that question you know we're Obviously, while we're still, you know, in uh, in some version of the pandemic, you know, we'll be we'll be cognizant of you know what we do from a public appearance standpoint and everything of that nature. But you know, once uh, once we're uh, have that fully in the rearview mirror, I mean, we definitely want to create opportunities um, for fans and community groups to come to our, come to our HQ. Um, you know, we'll have events here. Um, the players will, will certainly be a part of that. We want to get out into the community, um, you know, create opportunities to engage with whether it's high school esports teams, college esports teams. I mean, I think that's such a critical part of building a local fan base and and a local fan community um, that obviously we haven't been able to do for the last uh, for the last eight, 18 months, um, at least since we hosted the the first CDL event here. So. Um, certainly that's an important part of, of the future plans for us and probably every, you know, every team in the CDL. Thanks, Brett. Uh, this, this question is from Chase Hyatt, uh, also for Brett. What has been the organizational reaction to the general COD community rallying around Rocker towards the end of the season? Uh, I, I love that question. Um, and, you know, we'd love to hear our, our players' thoughts as well. Um, you know, but it's you know it, it was really special to you know to witness the you know the crowd rooting on rooting on the guys and and chanting for Rocker um, you know certainly at Major Five I and mean, that 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 was pretty epic um, as well as in LA for Champs um, and you know I, 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 this I appreciate the question too it gives me a chance to give a shout out um, to our staff that works incredibly hard every day whether it's on um, the content team or the marketing side or our staff that you know make sure the players have what they need and. Um, and supports the supports the the team logistically, um, you know all the all of the hard work that um, that the team that the, that the staff does to support all those areas. Um, you know, to, to see fans react um, in a positive way is, is um, you know, it, it's a credit to everybody that's a part of the organization, players, staff, and and you know the vibe that that we're creating that fans want to rally around the team. Um, you know, would love to hear <clears throat> any any player thoughts on you know what what they saw from the fans um, at at the two events as well as just in in general. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the fans are crazy. I mean, major five, they were going nuts. I mean, we were losing series, we're we're down series, and they're still going crazy for us. So it was awesome to see. Uh, I mean, fans on Twitter, we always see the love going out there. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a cool experience. Yeah, I would say we're just we're just a likable, like down to earth group of like guys, and I think people realize that, and it's hard to like not root and and cheer for a team like that, and uh, with with an organization with great staff that backs us all the way. Um, 
so yeah uh the fans are crazy like to have them in our corner is obviously amazing and like we saw major five and even champs like they were going crazy for us they had the shirts they had everything so um yeah it's a big part of a big part of it all for me yeah, yeah i think, think fans or, go ahead go ahead uh, i think fans is just like it's awesome like just always having like knowing out there they're backing you up and i mean like i said in the past like when you hear them chanting for you, it's almost like, hey, like I want to go that next level just to win for our, the team and also for the fans as well. Yeah, I think definitely having a roster that's likable is important, but having an organization that does so much and works so hard and makes people feel so like included in, in a community helps a lot because Rockers are always doing the most. They're having the watch parties for the league matches and the tournaments. They're giving out shirts at the, at the events, and then people are going to start taking a liking towards that team and organization and they're going to feel a part of it. So uh, Rocker does a great job. X. Well, thank you. Okay, McCoy, a question for each of the players. What is one aspect of your individual gameplay you want to improve leading into the 2022 Vanguard season? Uh, I'll go first. I'll just say personally, uh, Instead of uh, working on my strong suits, I feel like I want to improve my weaknesses a lot more. For example, like I have a lot to work on, but I think I just want to keep getting better at like fundamentals and making sure my situational play is very, very consistent. So then it just makes it bet easier for the team to understand how I play. So. Yeah, for me, I think it like can just consistently making calls um, just from the back end. Because like me as a main AR, like I'm going to see like the game being played out slower than the rest of my teammates not always but majority of the time so yeah just like making those uh in-game play calls which i feel like i i had a a strong footing on towards the later end of the year um so yeah just keep developing that habit um and then the mechanical and like gun like winning gunfights things like that i think those will come so i think it's like eli said the fundamentals like making them consistent Um, yeah, you up? yeah, you yeah, up? yeah right. uh, for me, I would say it would be like hard, hard point gameplay as a team. Uh, I feel like I can really step up. Uh, I feel like I have a really good understanding of hard point. I feel like I always have. And uh, I really want to like go into this next year and actually have a very good system for it. And uh, I mean, we still we still did that this year. Uh, but I think it's a huge thing for us that we're all going in with this squad now because we can go in at the beginning of the year, learn the game together. But um, I can also be more impactful in the sense of like actually implementing that system of uh just how i have learned it and how like what's worked for me over the years so i think that's uh what i'm going to work on a lot yeah and to uh, finish it off i think making sure that uh we're playing all smart individually myself included uh, when you're in a really good situation don't just ego chow and go crazy and then die and then it gives the other team a chance to break out of it just making sure your life is as hard as possible for the other team to kill you and uh, being the biggest nuisance you can thanks dylan uh this this is a question for the coaches from emfa is there any plan on picking up a fifth for a substitute um yeah not currently at the moment though i like waiting to see who's actually playing the game well once it's been out for a little bit i don't think it's the most beneficial to kind of go and sign someone like instantly. I think if you look at like a lot of the other teams that sign someone in the off season, not too many of those uh, posed to be pretty successful. And usually when someone signs someone earlier in the season, that uh, tends to be a lot more viable in my opinion. Brian, um, this is a question from Jack for Standy. How is attach a mentor for you? Um, I think, uh, Dylan has just taught me a lot, like outside of game on like how to be a good teammate. And also he's just, he's funny and, uh, he's a great guy to be around. And he also has taught me a lot about like fundamentals and how to be impactful. Even when I feel like I'm not being impactful on the map or feel like I'm being a good player on the map or being a good teammate, even when in my eyes, I feel like I'm not doing much for the team. I think he, uh, I also think he has a really good way of like speaking to me and I think he's a uh, really good and he makes me a. Uh, like I'm a great player and he pushes me to be better whether that's inside or outside of game so I'm glad to have him as my SMG duo I like that making me feel nice and old but you forgot the uh, zombie noises too outside uh, yeah. of game. And, and the zombie noises we we make noises together <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so important. okay uh from Chris Navarre if snipers come back in SMG who will be running it 
the narrow dill, probably. Of course, I'd of narrow. course. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll run it still is pulling it out. <laughs> I'll run it up. He, he loves it. I've usually made the mistake of, uh, like, when a game would come out, I would just let someone else on the team snipe, and then at nah, some point throughout for... the season, I would just be like, I oh, mean, this guy's like, you know, he's all right. But... He's not doing it. He's not doing the <laughs> job. So I'm just going to make sure, like, if snipers are allowed, that I'm grinding with it as early as possible because uh, I always make sure to hit some crazy shots and uh, help the team be as beneficial as I can. Love it. Okay, last question from Adam Scott. Who is the most scared to go skydiving? Raise your hand. <laughs> nice. All right, you know who it is. Yeah, That's an boy. easy answer. It was me. Honestly, I wasn't going to go skydiving, but then Mike kind of convinced me. So, honestly, I'm glad I did it. And anyone out there that's scared to go skydiving, it's not, it sounds scary, but once you do it, it's... I didn't want him to miss out on him. Great. Yeah, you didn't want to miss out on how he wants to go again. Coaster. It's like he riding your first roller again. coaster. You're scared, yeah. but once you do it, it's You can't miss out on that opportunity. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks so much. Thanks for all the media for joining us today. Um, thanks for everybody for tuning in. Uh, this video will be available on demand on the Rocker YouTube. Make sure you hit like and subscribe so that you're in the loop on all off-season news from Minnesota Rocker. Have a great rest of your Thursday, everyone.